De regreso aquí en Auto 060 en Cristina Radio Network. And now we're going to switch back to English immediately because this is the shortest segment of the show. I don't want to waste any time. We're going to talk to Alan Carl, who just uh, completed a fabulous trip. One of those things that everybody dreams about that not many people do. How are you, Carl? I'm doing fantastic. How Alan, are you doing? I'm sorry, Alan Carl. This is your last name. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm cursed with two first names. <laughs> Excellent. Great. So, uh, Alan Carl just completed a trip around the world on a motorcycle. And even though our show is about cars, I always say if it has uh, an engine and wheels and moves, it fits on the show. So, you uh, just completed your trip on a BMW motorcycle, right? Yes, I did. It's uh, a, a BMW GS Dakar 650cc. It's a single cylinder. Um, a large, we call them dual sport motorcycles, so it's like a big dirt bike. Yeah, I think a, a friend of mine, I don't know if you know her, her name is Alicia Sornosa. She's from Spain, and she completed not such a long trip as yours, three years that uh, took you. She just went around the world shipping the bike where it was impossible to drive. And uh, she did, I think, in the same exact motorcycle. I think is this something that is like really durable, and you guys who do these kind of trips know about it and just do it on this kind of bike? Yeah, these motorcycles have been um, getting more popular in the last five years because they are very durable, um, uh, highly reliable, and they have the suspension you know necessary because once you leave uh, the Western world, whether United States or certainly Western Europe, the roads slowly deteriorate, and you need the extra throw and suspension, and you also need a bike that uh, isn't going to break down on you because it's very difficult to uh, find parts and things like that once you're out there in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let's uh, let, let's let's do this uh, first before we start a trip. Tell me what you're doing before, because as I, I said in the introduction, the kind of trip you did, a lot of us think about, but nobody is uh, brave enough to do it. So tell me what we're doing before when you thought, okay, this is my sound a good idea. So it's 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 one of those interesting things. Sometimes I like to say that uh, there are certain events in my life that. Uh, all fell into place or in many ways out of place call them forks on the road of life but uh, i was running a, a marketing and communications advertising agency and i found my job uh, very unfulfilling um, our company was growing we went through several mergers so to speak acquisitions um, and at the same time i was uh, struggling in a relationship uh, in my marriage So one day I woke up and I realized that uh, I was out of a job because I quit, unemployed, and my marriage had ended in divorce. And I did, Javier, what we, uh, all of us that are maybe entrepreneurial or spiritual that way did, is I started another company. <laughs> However, I found, why did I do that? So yeah. I, my, my dream has always been to travel around the world and experience different cultures, to meet different peoples, to learn different languages. And my passions have always been You know, certainly riding motorcycles, but photography and writing. So I blogged about this trip all during the way. So I, I looked at these forks, as I like to say in my life, as opportunities to follow my dream and, and pursue those passions. And uh, so I hopped on that motorcycle to discover the world. And it's just what's possible. Amazing. So where, where, where did you start and what uh, was the first, uh, like, legs of the tree? How do you plan it, all those things? Yeah, I started initially in Southern California where I was living in Newport Beach and headed north first. I wanted to, uh, part of my goal was to go to as far north as you could go in the world, to the top of the world, to the Arctic Ocean. And I headed that way and I looked at those two reasons I wanted to do that. Certainly I wanted to see the Arctic Ocean, but I also realized that I would be heading back out through uh, Mexico and Central America. And any problems I might have with the motorcycle or my load or these kinds of things, I would have one last chance to get within the proximity of my home to make any last minute changes. So I headed north to Alaska, turned around, headed south through Western Canada, down through the Western United States, and eventually into Baja, California, and all the way through Mexico, and, and all the way down, because the other part of that goal was to go as far south as I could go. Yeah. To uh, Tierra del Fuego, and the Zuna, uh, in a pueblo muy pequeño, muy, muy, muy small, very small town called Ushuaia. <laughs> 
in Ushuaia. I actually been there. It's the, the southernmost city in the world, in the Argentinian side of uh, South America. And a beautiful yeah, place. Exactly. So, so I guess yeah, you made it there like, uh, I mean, when you went up, I'm assuming you went in the summer and then uh, you turn around and uh, down and you there, were there in the summer again. <laughs> exactly. exactly. It was all about the timing, of course. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so uh, you did it completely solo, right? On your own. Uh, and I, I guess the amazing thing about these kind of trips is the people you meet on the road. Yeah, that is it, absolutely. You know, when you go alone, you tend to be more open to experiences, open to meeting new people. And I think when you're alone, also local people are more open to approaching you as well, if they have their own sense of curiosity. So going alone was definitely um, the objective. I, I want to do that. Now, there were several times along the way I met some other motorcyclists, and I would spend a little bit of time with them. Sometimes they were local. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes there were other travelers. So I, I actually met a, in, in Peru uh, another American uh, from Durango, Colorado, and then uh, traveled with him for a bit. When I was in um, South Africa or in Namibia, I met another uh, gentleman there, a South African man on a trip, and, and we spent some time together. Yeah. There were a few occasions where I traveled uh, uh, for, for a short time with someone else. Yeah. So uh, from South America, you, you drove up again, or you just ship uh, yourself and the bike somewhere else to continue? In South America, after I hit to after I landed in Ushuaia, I headed north to Buenos Aires, then all the way north through Brazil to the Amazon River. So I wanted to go. Uh, I didn't go to the every country in South America, but pr pretty much most of them. Um, and then from uh, Brazil, I shipped the motorcycle to Africa in an airplane um, and to Cape Town, South Africa, and then continued my journey from Africa, uh, from South Africa through up to, uh, to Eastern Africa, to Egypt, across the Sinai, and then into the into the Middle East. Wow. And then I guess, uh, what, like the, the Far East, uh, China or Japan or somewhere else, and then come back? I didn't actually make it. By the time I actually got into Eastern Europe, I had been three years on the road. My goal had been to go through Iran and then into Pakistan and then into Nepal and into India. However, at three separate occasions, I, uh, I was turned down at the Iranian embassies in various cities, the last yeah. one being in Ankara in Turkey. So with with the frustration of not being able to get into Iran, and then I wanted to ride into the Jerichoram Mountains of Pakistan, I decided that uh, after three years, it probably was time to get back to the... So I shipped my bike back to uh, Washington, D.C., and then traveled my own country here in the States, um, only using the back road. I did never once got on a freeway or a highway, always little roads, yeah. and, um, and got back and, and uh, got right to work working on this book. Yeah, so I, and that's like that, that next question, and if I, unfortunately we only have like one more minute, and then continue another long trip, three years to publish your book, right? So tell us about your book and where we can find it. Yeah, the, the, the book took three years to do. It, it's available on Amazon, or you can get it on my web, forksthebook.com. It's called Forks, Equipment for Culture, Cuisine, and Connection. It has 700 photographs and 40 recipes. I, uh, here I, I included food because it's not where we all connect. After a long day, whether you're driving your car or you're uh, riding a motorcycle, you sit down, you might want to have a cold beer or, or a nice glass of wine with a good meal with good friends. So every country is represented in this book. Photos, stories, and a recipe. Excellent. Alan Carl, who just uh, completed, um, uh, I guess, two trips, one riding on his bike and then like re reviving the, reliving the, the, the trip and uh, working on his book, uh, Forks, A Quest of Culture, Cuisine and Connection. Well, Carl, uh, Al Alan, sorry, again, thank you very much for sharing your time and uh, we're going to post uh, all this information for our audience to follow you and uh, hopefully they'll get uh, go and buy your book and enjoy the at least part of it, because it's nothing like uh, doing it the real thing, but a, a, a book is a great way to share it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much, Javier. Bye. Esta ha sido la edición de esta semana. Los espero muy pronto aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Esto es Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Mo. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.